Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Last week we built the ultimate gaming and video editing PC, proudly sponsored by Nvidia and Aorus. And in that video, I promised that I would benchmark the system and show you guys some things that have been made with improvements with Adobe Premiere Pro and newer things like Death Stranding. So as usual, we're gonna run it through our regular suite of benchmarks uh, with some RTX benchmarks as well. And I really wanted to show you this stuff with Premiere Pro. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Now, the reason why I didn't end up doing this in the original build video for this is because it would have just gone for way too long and I don't want to waste your guys time. Even though we can like add chapters and stuff in these videos now, a 30 minute video including benchmarks and all the build stuff, it's probably just on the verge of it being too long. So I didn't really want to subject you guys to that. So with that said, let's do our regular Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark with DLSS and RTX just to show you the differences at 1440p and 4K and also 1080p as well. And you guys can get an idea of how the system performs. And then after that, we're gonna run our regular suite of benchmarks, one that we run on every single GPU on our test bench system. So you can get an idea of how this system compares to our test bench, along with a bunch of other GPUs as well. So sit tight, we're gonna do that right now and take a look. As you can see with those Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmarks that we just showed, uh, RTX does decrease the GPU's overall performance, but with DLSS enabled, it brings it back up to a level playing field. But this isn't new information. This isn't stuff we don't know about already, but I thought I'd share it with you just so you can get an idea of the performance. With all that said, let's take a look at the gaming performance in our regular suite of benchmarks so you can see how this system compares to our test bench system along with a bunch of other GPUs, as I mentioned before. So let's take a look. The next thing I wanted to show you guys was something that I thought was interesting to me with DLSS 2.0. Now, DLSS 2.0 has kind of just been released and the biggest title really taking advantage of this is Death Stranding. And me personally, I've, I've sunk like 100 hours into the game. I've played it extensively and I personally played it on my gaming PC with DLSS on and I didn't notice that much difference in the fidelity of graphics. I played at 1440p the whole way through. In this video, I'm gonna show you 1440p uh, compared with 4K and also with no DLSS on as well. So let's take a bit of a look and see how it stacks up with these modes in kind of different scenarios in the game. And I'm gonna show you a few things that I noticed that DLSS does to image quality on moving objects in Death Stranding. So let's take a look. So what we're seeing in 4K with DLSS 2.0 disabled is we're getting around 60 to 75 frames per second. The second that we run the scenario again, so what we're doing is we're just using the same part of the map and we're just traversing it. There's a few objects here to actually put some load on the GPU as well. And what we're seeing when we put it into performance mode, we're getting a significant bump in frames. We're getting closer to that 90 to 100 FPS mark and in quality mode, it's coming down a bit to around 80, 88, and peaking out at around 92 frames per second. So personally, if you're playing in 4K, 
I would recommend using quality mode because it's the best balance of image quality and performance. So you kind of have that middle ground performance mode. You do notice the image quality drop a little bit, but not as much as you would expect. But personally, again, I would recommend going with quality mode. Now let's run this scenario again in 1440p and show you the gains that can be had with 1440p. Again, we're kind of seeing the same thing echoed with 1440p. There's basically three different tiers of performance with DLSS with this game. And to be honest, this implementation of DLSS 2.0 is absolutely, and for lack of a better word, it's game changing. It made the game a much more playable and enjoyable experience for me, especially with someone like me who's put a stupid amount of time into Death Stranding, I did like getting some extra performance with DLSS without sacrificing too much in image quality. Obviously you are getting better image quality if you're not using DLSS, you can't deny that, but the differences are not that much. So yeah, that's what I, uh, <laughs> my, my hot take on using DLSS with Death Stranding. Now there's a few things to note as well and something that I did actually notice is when you're seeing uh, some smaller moving objects, you're getting animation and motion trails and it's not to do with the monitor or anything because even in the captured footage as you're seeing here, it's exactly the same. So it's nothing to do with it. So I'm guessing it's to do with the way that DLSS upscales textures and they're just being a little bit of artifacting. And maybe it's just a part of the visual style of the game as well, but yeah, we didn't have enough time to really investigate, but I did want to mention it because I'm sure someone's going to comment on it. <laughs> and I, I really wanted to see like all of these scenarios. So I, I basically ran the same frame that you're seeing now in all three DLSS modes. Well, rather DLSS on, off, performance, quality, blah, blah, blah. And I also did it in 1440p and 4K as well, just to show you that difference. Last but not least, let's take a look at the thing that is actually the most exciting to me because it's the thing that I do the most and it's using NVIDIA cards for video editing. Now, as you're seeing in the footage here that we captured, the timeline performance is really, really good here. Uh, to, be, to be fair, the, this system, regardless of the version of Premiere, it won't drop frames with this codec that we're using. So as you can see here, we're shooting in Blackmagic RAW. We shoot all of our Gear Seekers videos in Blackmagic RAW. So we chomp through a heck of a lot of data to make these videos. And as you can see, like we're not dropping frames with playback or scrubbing or anything like that. And we've got this at full quality in the timeline as well. But that's, that's fine, right? Okay, so editing is fine. We know that it's gonna work. What you're gonna notice more than anything now is your render times with the way that it uses NVENC with these Turing cores. It is uh, completely game changing. It has personally saved me so much time. You can't even imagine. I don't even have to lie about it. Let's take a look at some results. Basically, we're gonna alternate between the latest version of Premiere Pro with a benchmark project. Basically what I did is I got the B-roll section from the original build video for this system. I put it in a timeline by itself and we rendered it out with the latest version of Premiere Pro with the software renderer, with the CUDA renderer. We also used the original version of Premiere Pro CC 2020 with both the CUDA renderer and the software renderer. And as you can see, with these results, the difference between the rendering now with NVENC and the original release of 2020 is absolutely huge. It is mind boggling. This video took on average with the, we did render this a couple times. It took between 48 to 50 seconds to render out this two and a bit minute clip, which is crazy considering we are rendering with using the YouTube H264 4K preset and we're rendering black magic raw. So it is very, very impressive how much a performance game we've got for rendering. So me personally, when I'm rendering videos at the end of the day, it's taking me a fraction of the time to get my work done. And I, I, I feel like this is really, really important for people who are building a PC like this, mainly for that video editing task. It is gonna save you a whole lot of time which means you can get more done in a day or you can finish earlier. And yeah, that's uh, basically all I wanted to share with you guys about this PC. I am very impressed with the performance of this in Premiere especially. I wasn't expecting it to be this good, 
but this is even a viable option for me to daily drive and edit with. It is actually very, very, very impressive. Yeah, I think we're basically done with this video. That's all. I, it's basically all I've got to say today. Completely winged it. Just wanted to share some info with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, special thanks to Nvidia and Oris for sponsoring this build that we did. Uh, without them, we could never afford to do builds like this. It's uh, really humbling that they would pick us to do a project like this. Anyways, guys, if you like the video and you like the music you heard here, I make all of that available over on our Patreon. If you didn't like this video, you're not to do one. Tell us what you hated about it. Hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And I hope this little bit of a video helped you. And I hope it, it, made, it helped you to learn some stuff about the way that these GPUs can help speed up your workflow. Now, there's one thing that I didn't test in this video that I thought I would just quickly mention at the end is we didn't use the studio drivers. We just used the game ready drivers. If we were to use the studio drivers, those render times would be even lower. But because we were testing gaming performance more than the Premiere stuff, I wanted to even the playing field by just using the game ready drivers. Anyways, thanks for watching.